To all the dearest, I hope that you are doing very well this evening. I've been sitting and drinking tea and enjoying the snow. This sort of letter is one of the first to include the updated version of Old Boolean, uh, rather than just being a weird combination of German, French, and Norwegian words misspelled. So I hope that you find it a little bit more variable to read than the last one. <laughs> the Emperor of Old Thule, Arlesar. Rhea of Solish, the last Emperor of Old Thule. Einvar continued on smoothly, but I could tell he was skeptical. Yet, he was the sort of man who would bring up his skepticism politely and smoothly. The sort of man whose laugh lines... The sort of man who had laugh lines visible in the faint stains of war paint still on his face. He twirled his auburn, well-kept beard as he spoke to this, Riel. But, I didn't think the crowned man was lying. I had found him in a casket altar. His hair and eyes were right. He had rusted armor, legs, and arms, the sun rune on his brow, his sword enchanted. I approached him slowly as Einver questioned him, and gently reached out and placed a hand on the hand holding his blade. He looked me over, and cautiously let me take it. It was lighter than most blades that size. Ease flowed through it in a pattern not dissimilar to the bent per serpent pendant on my neck. Fire patterns, protection patterns, and runes visible only to a mage's eye. Fragrach, the sword of promised victory. I drew the blade from its sheath, and there they were again engraved in the metal on the golden blade, with East filling them. Einvelor felt silent, staring. East, Einvar, it's real. I nodded. Rhea sheathed his blade again. It seemed heavier in his hands, a burden to bear. Einvar quickly cleared out the crowd and pulled us all into his chambers, aboard his copper ship in the harbor, poured us all mugs of mead, and began to ask the man questions. I sat quietly, drinking the meat. It was sweet and warm, and nice on my throat. Omar. Sa, uh, vit majestet, es yad? Riel. Si vos viles. Par lengraf, ei sovnet. Omar. He asked how long he had slumbered. To him. Problems Asiran four hundred divers? Ria, four hundred divers. Then, yes, I am in Kaiser. Bring me grill. I'm for. See, Vos Vides. To me, he says if he's been gone almost four hundred years, then he is no emperor. Call him Ria. His expression was even. I couldn't read him. Was that a somber admission? Was it bitter? Or a humble understanding of his place and power? The more I looked at him, the more I realized he was covered in dirt and dust. I stood and got him a rag and wash basin. He nodded at me gratefully, and then dusted off his face and shoulders. Here he But there's Sigil nothing. I'm far. Alice then rent guild in the Rousseau. My ears perked up at my name. Einvar looked back, and Riov turned to me with another one of his gentle smiles. Riov, then close Alice, for a vacuum og a help me gafine in oversetter. Einvar, he says, thank you for awaking me and have, helping me find a translator. My scar is flushed red with a hint of embarrassment. I nodded back at him. I had done very little. Einvar was doing all the work here. Riov narrowed his eyes and carefully mimicked Einvar. Thank you for awakening me. And Einvar prompted him. Helping me find a translator. Einvar laughed proudly. Riov was a quick learner. Like Gil had been. I shuddered and looked away. My hand pressed my pendant. He wasn't Gil. Imvar noticed my chill and pointed out blankets in the end of the bed. I stood and wrapped one around me with my hot mead and listened. 
not wanting to look back at the two, not wanting them to see me like this. Ivar continued on Gleef gracefully, helping Rhea slowly correct his syllables and words to their more modern form. Rhea, but what has happened to Thule? Ivar, the North broke apart after your death, uh, Fag of Men, but there is a city state called Nova Thule to the southeast of here. It's ruled by the noble houses in your absence. Rhea, Absence? I'm far. Uh. Fraved Savos. If the noble houses, they will not happy to see me. Uh, me. To see me. I'm far. Smoothly. Oh, I'm sure they will sing praises of your return. There was a moment of silence. Riv knew he spoke true. Most of the nobles would see him as a threat. The rest would see him as a tool. Gil would have helped him. I glanced over my shoulder. He had a grim expression. Riev, why am I here? Your legends say you will all return in Thule's hour of greatest need. Riev let out a bark of laughter, almost bitterly, and shook his head. But Thule is no more. Old Thule fell, but the city-state remains and Nova Thule just surrendered to the After Kratoria in the south. Riev, sitting up. The After Kratoria? Imvar. In your time, was the After Kratoria ruled by their philosopher king? Riev, bitterly. Yes, it, or rather, he was a tyrant in my time. I was never able to defeat an army led by the philosopher king. They took him apart, though, after he... Imvar. Went on a murderous rampage? Uh... I could hear the storyteller's smile creep into the cadence of Einver's gentle voice. It was so soothing. He fell in love, but most women want a man of flesh and blood, not a golem. And in all the things they taught him, unfortunately, they forgot to teach him how to handle rejection. They took him apart after that, and it wasn't until recently that they needed him again. Yet now, now he has the power to level entire cities with a single gesture. The Allied North cannot hope to compete with that. I had it, felt a chill settle in as Einvar said that. It was Yuletide, and the after Katoria's march across the North had ceased for now. But with him, they could force us to capitulate anything. Anything was better than suffering that thing's wrath. I couldn't save them. I couldn't save Gil. My hand hurt as it pressed into the point of the pendant. Briov took a deep breath, taking it all in. He drew his blade with a slither. I stiffened, looking over at him. He held the shining blade at arm's length. If Thule requires it, I will go anywhere. There is no burden too heavy, no obstacle too great. I swear, on the true name of my sword, that Thule will be free. Anger bubbled up in me. I stood and stormed out, slamming the door behind me. He knew nothing. What a naive fool. And that's tonight's letter. Um, I'm really happy that we're getting to see more of Arliss there and her dynamic with Rio and Imvar. Um, I think that it's uh, one thing to write a conlang and another thing to have to read it out loud, and especially not my uh, really bad one. This is legitimately my worst one. I've said it before. This one is kind of cobbled together from uh, Norwegian and German and French and Irish, and it's... Uh, Oh boy, I'm cringing every time I have to read conlang stuff. My modern conlangs I'm pretty proud of, and I don't feel guilty about them, but these, this is making me question my life choices. <laughs> um, the thing that's especially tricky about that specific conlang is that I wanted it to sound like Thulean, like a precursor to Thulean, which is what it's supposed to be in the world, but also a precursor to English, like it needs to be Englishy enough that someone can look at it and be like, oh, if I don't go look up the conlang, I can understand what's going on, even though Einvar translates everything. Um, so it was a little rough, uh, but you know, uh, these are the things, you know, if you cringe at it, that's how you know that you need to fix it. And that's how you know that you have growth, because you can see what the things that you did wrong. Um, so, you know, PSA. Embrace your cringe. Feel like you're allowed to do the things you want to do.
Um, I also want to note at this time um, that uh, I'm still kind of working on how to read out the dialogue um, because once again, it's written in like a visual novel style way. Um, and I suppose I could just like put up visual novel-y looking people on the screen, but that's, that's not how it work, you know? Not that I'm unwilling to put work in, but like, this isn't the final draft and all that, or you know, whatever. It's, it's as far as it's being taken right now, who knows? Um, so yeah, you may also have, by the way, been hearing me do book noises in the background of this. Like, I don't know how much you can hear, but I went to a vanity press and I printed out a couple of copies of the first, uh, let's see, actually, I think 160, those are very different numbers, I know. Um, first 44, excuse me, the first 44 world letters. Um, I got them printed in a book um, just so that, you know, as like a Christmas present to myself, uh, just because it's kind of nice to have, you know, physical copies of your work. And also um, there was a, I think there was like an internet scare or something at the time when I was like, oh, what if like all my electronics die? I want to have a copy of all this stuff that I'm doing that's physical that can never go away. Um, or I mean, it can, you can like burn this book. But, you know, if the internet crashes and the electricity grid crashes like tomorrow, I want to be able to know what was happening in my stories. Not that it's not in my head, but just it's nice to have uh, paper versions too. I just have random anxieties like that, and then I'm like, I need to um, pay for things to fix them instead of, you know, seeking spiritual guidance and counseling and, you know, why have therapy when I can spend money? Capitalism. It's great. Anyway, um, so that's that. Uh, I hope that you had a very good time tonight, and I hope you're looking forward to next time where we figure out why Arla Sarah is having a meltdown. Thank you very much. If you've made it to the end of this video, then congrats, you're actually like one of my most avid followers of my stuff, which is kind of crazy, and I'm pretty, uh, I'm very happy to have you in my community. Um, I have had a couple of you ask me to start a Discord server uh, specifically for world building and um, for s information and news surrounding Isaiah. So I've started one up. Uh, you are invited, personally. And, um, you know, come check it out. Uh, it's called the Isaiah Atelier, and it's for you to get better at world building, writing, art, music, whatever other handicrafts you might do. And uh, we'll be there to help you uh, 